my name is Stefania and I work here at Copan Group as a Scientific Affairs Specialist. Today I would like to introduce you to a new series of YouTube videos called Copan Pills, where I'm going to shed some light on microbiology topics, curiosities and clearly explain you how our products are made here at Copan. And hopefully I'm going to make you passionate about science as we are. Today, I would like to focus my attention on a topic that has attracted a lot of critics online, which is swab sterilization. Some videos online have accused this procedure of being harmful for our health, but today I will explain you why you shouldn't worry about being damaged by a swab produced here at Copan. But first of all, let me show you. This is a swab, and it is a medical device that is used to take biological samples from the human body. And as all medical devices that get in touch with your skin, wounds or mucosas, it needs to be sterile. But what does sterile mean? Sterile means free of any viable microorganisms, such as viruses and bacteria. And sterilization is a method that has been around for a very long time, since the end of the 19th century, when Louis Pasteur discovered that by sterilizing medical devices, he was able to prevent infections. But do you know why sterilization is really important? It's important because microorganisms are almost everywhere, from water to soil to living organisms. And some of them can cause serious disease if they enter in contact with the human body. So by sterilizing our medical devices, we achieve two main goals. One is to protect the patient. In fact, we prevent this way the transfer of microorganisms from the medical device to the human body. And secondly, by sterilizing our medical devices, we prevent contamination with the final result of a diagnostic test. You will be curious to know how sterilization is performed. Sterilization is an extremely complex procedure that is strictly regulated by national and international laws, and there are several methods to perform sterilization. One of the most common is to sterilize medical devices using high temperatures and using an instrument called autoclave. But some medical devices can be damaged by this procedure since they're sensitive to high heat and humidity. Therefore, here at Copan, we use two other alternative methods to sterilize our medical devices. One is defined as irradiation and the other is defined as sterilization with ethylene oxide. And if you want to know which method has been used on our medical devices, you just have to check the external pouch of our devices. Here you're gonna find a uh, standardized symbol. If you find the sterile R, it means that it's been sterilized by irradiation. And if you find sterile EO, it means that it's been sterilized with ethylene oxide. But let's explore a bit more about how each sterilization method is performed. Irradiation takes advantage of the penetration of high energy rays, which can destroy the DNA of microorganisms and free the medical device of any contaminant. X-rays, E-beams and gamma rays are all types of irradiation and X-rays and E-beam come from an electrical source, while gamma rays derive from the decay of a chemical element called cobalt. Irradiation can be performed for different amount of times, ranging between a few minutes to a few hours. And during this time, the medical device is always protected by its external pouch. The time is established using statistical methods to ensure the proper sterility level. But most importantly, the amount of energy is always kept below a certain threshold so that any radioactivity is induced into the medical device. And this methodic is so safe that it is used in the food and pharma industry. The other sterilization method used here at Copan for our swabs is the sterilization through ethylene oxide. And this is the important part of our video because this methodic is the one that has attracted the most critics. In fact, some videos have accused the swab sterilization through ethylene oxide of inducing carcinogenicity into our medical devices. But I will explain you that you don't have to worry about carcinogenicity because at the end of the production of our medical devices, the residual levels of ethylene oxide are carefully measured to be below the threshold that can be dangerous for the patients. But let me explain you a bit more how the sterilization is performed and what ethylene oxide is. 
Ethylene oxide is a small reactive molecule that is capable of binding the DNA of viable organisms and preventing their reproduction. Therefore, it's an extremely effective sterilization method and it is used to up to 70% of medical devices that are single use, such as swabs like these, small tubings and catheters, and a lot of devices that are used in a hospital setting. And the step of production that is involved in the sterilization through EO are several and they are all checked by competent authorities. And they involved two final steps of variation where it is made sure that no residues of ethylene oxide are left on our medical devices. To conclude, here at Copan, we really care about our sterilization methods and we want to accomplish two main goals. First, making sure that there are no contaminants left on our medical devices that can damage the final result of our diagnostic test. But especially, we care about the health of our patient and we do not want to transfer any harmful microorganisms to the human surface. But now, let me uh, explain you how you can use the medical devices and the swabs in a way that it does not compromise the sterilization of our products. Let's pretend for a second you're an healthcare professional that is about to perform a test using one of our swabs. First of all, it is important that you wash your hands and disinfect them and wear single-use gloves. Once you're ready, you can handle the swab and you have to make sure that you peel the external pouch from the correct side that is indicated by this arrow. This is important because if you peel it from the other side, you risk touching the tip of the swab and contaminating the final result of the diagnostic test. Once you're ready and your swab is out, you have to make sure that the tip doesn't touch any external surface before and after the diagnostic test. Once you're done, the swab is ready to be put back into a tube and to be sent to a diagnostic laboratory. And for today, this is all, and I thank you for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you to our next Copan Peel. Ciao a tutti!